stand that we're able to now to stand in prayer as we begin this Sabbath, this worship. Right. Dear Father, thank you for for being for allowing us to be vessels, Lord, in your name, Lord. I pray that the Holy Spirit is surrounding each and every one of us. It's in our hearts and in our souls, Lord. I pray that we worship you, have you on our breath, Lord, and that you continue to be our strength, Lord, our shelter, Father. Lord, I thank you. In your name I pray. Amen. Now remain standing as we worship together. Our God is great, is he not? You guys are going to let first service beat you? Come on. Our God is great, is he not? Amen. 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 As we sing our God. God is with you. No one can stop you. And if our God is for us, and if our God is for us, then who could ever stop us? And if our God is with us, then what can stand against? And if our God is for us, then who could ever stop us? And if our God is with us, then what can stand against? And if our God is for us, then who could ever stop us? 
to God be the glory.
worship. Because it's a privilege to be here. Amen.
Great are you, Lord. Great are you, Lord. Amen. Uh, still, good morning, everyone. Happy Sabbath, everyone. Yeah, we are good to be here this morning. We are so happy to be here this morning. And good morning and happy Sabbath to those who join online this morning. Yes, it's so good to get together and to sing, Great are you, Lord. Because our God is great. So great that we are alive here this morning to praise his name. So this morning, we are... We, while we are here, we need to have a, um, a special thought for those not too far from here. Um, I would say on the east, most, mostly on the east part of our county, we are going through a difficult time with the flood and a lot of water. People who lost a, a lot of things, and then so let's have a special thought to those uh, for those people and help also in any way that we can. While you are joining us this morning to this divine worship, and we are inviting those that are still joining online, that our doors are open and you can come every Saturday morning, first service at 9 a.m. or to the second service at 11.30 a.m. Or in the, between the two services, we do have in-person Sabbath school going on at Plantation SDA. But more than joining, if you are not yet a member of this church and you want to join our family, actually we invite you to do so because if you come here one time, two times, the next, by the time you get to, the, to your third visit here, you should really seriously consider joining our family. And as you can see on the screen, there is the bar that you can, you can scan, you can scan, and it will connect you to our church services that will assist you to become a member of the plantation family. So we invite you again. If you are still visiting, transform yourself from visitor to member. Today, Saturday, um, April 15, we were supposed to have our ministry fair. Unfortunately, we had to cancel the ministry fair because of everything that uh, have been going on in Broward County this week. We, didn't, we were not even sure that the, the, our property would be um, open this morning because of the lake outside. So we had to postpone the ministry fair. But it's not The event, it's not completely canceled. It is postponed. So the ministry fair will happen soon, next month, on, uh, specifically on May 20th. The ministry fair will happen on May 20th. This will be at the gym and an opportunity to each one of you and some people that are online to come here and to visit the ministry fair where all the ministries at this church will be sharing their work, what they are doing, and their need for more people to be involved. So you will be able to assess and to see where you would like to serve while you are here in the Plantation Seventh-day Adventist Church. So the ministry fair will happen surely, hopefully, God willing, on May 20th um, of, of, of this year, specifically next month. Um, after the, going forward and next week, um, the youth and the children ministry, they will continue their, their work in downtown Fort Lauderdale, care from the old bless. It will happen next Saturday at 2 p.m. So if you want to help, to volunteer, to support, please make plans. The same place, it's always in Fort Lauderdale next week, um, at 2 p.m. It's every other week, I think. It's, it's happening in downtown Fort Lauderdale behind the Broward, Broward uh, County Library and across the street from this pizzeria, from a pizzeria. So this is where you can uh, participate next week in helping the homeless. Um, the youth also are now doing a drive 
formal attire donation drive going by the youth ministry from April 13 to April 22nd. It is already started all the way to next Saturday. If you have that nice attire that you bought, you never used, it's nice, probably pricey. You can bring it. They will find good use for it. If you have that nice one that is in very good shape, you can share. Bring it on. Or you can go to the store after Sabbath or tomorrow to the mall, buy a nice one and bring it for the youth while they are doing this drive for formal attire. So you can participate. They will be collecting here at church every day from 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. Uh, from Monday, this coming Monday through Saturday at the church lobby. Youth have a lot of events going on. They are preparing a special event uh, on uh, um, June, on June, yeah, June 20, July 22nd, actually, and they need participants. It's called Youth Jam 2K23, Youth Jam 2023. They need people for youth choir, praise team, and they need people for drama team. If you have any kind of talent, Please, and you are a young person, please, parent, encourage your young people to register. Uh, they have until April 30th to sign up to be part of this special event in July, on July 22nd, Youth Jam 2K23. Going on from the youth, now the men's ministry, next Sunday, not tomorrow, the next one, April 23rd. At 8.30 a.m. here at the Fellowship Hall, there is a men's prayer breakfast. And the invite is, uh, the, the guest speaker is Robert Bailey. This gentleman has a great story. I would invite you men to come out and to be part of this powerful men's prayer breakfast on April 23rd, 2023, 8.30 a.m. Next week, the week after... April 23rd. Now it's your turn. Women of the church, the women's ministry, chat and chook. And this will be connection, the part of me, with a guest speaker, again, a special guest speaker, Dr. Pat Timmes. So I invite all the women of the church now, please plan to stay Sabbath 29, Sabbath April 29th at 2 p.m. across at the gym for this special women's ministry event chat and show. So guys, come out and ladies on the 23rd and ladies come out on the 29th. Lastly, you know that our, um, there is a mission trip that is um, being planned, a seven day mission trip in Santo Domingo, the Dominican Republic, and where they will work specifically in the Bate community to offer medical care and all sort of assistance. So if you are interested, then, then you can go participate by going with the group or, and they need volunteer, they need medical volunteer, they need non-medical volunteer. So I'm inviting you uh, um, if you can and if you cannot go, you can still support because they need help um, in terms of funds to buy Things that they will be that they will use to serve these communities in the bad area of the Dominican um, in Santo Domingo in the Dominican Republic. So this will be Hope Ministry. Yes, from the Hope Ministry uh, um, that will uh, that will uh, organize up for humanity worldwide. Please that will organize this mission trip. So if you want to be part of it or have more information. The information are on the screen right now. So again, thank you for joining us this morning for this uh, worship service. I hope that you will be blessed, that you have already been blessed. And I, again, I wish to each one of you a happy Sabbath. Let us pray. Lord God, we are so thankful to be you this morning. And we are so thankful to know that you are in our midst. And we have the chance to get close to you, Lord. So, Lord, please do not pass us by, but touch us 
and give us that look that will transform our life. That is, get us closer to you and closer to eternity. This is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Hi everyone, it's Aunt Frenita. Today's story is called, In the Image of God. The memory verse is from Genesis chapter 1, verse 27. It says, God created mankind in his own image. In the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created them. Today's message is God surrounds me with his gifts of love. God created a beautiful and perfect world in six days. Then he created two very special people to enjoy it. Let's read about it. God had created the sun and the moon. He had created the plants, fish, birds, and animals. He looked at everything and saw that it was good but his creation was incomplete. It was time to create people. Making people would be different from making the creatures and the plants. People were to be in God's own image, and they were to rule over the animals. So God formed a man out of the dust of the ground. He carefully made the man's fingers and toes, his eyes, ears, and mouth. When God finished modeling the man, he blew into the man's nose. The man began to breathe. He opened his eyes and looked around. God smiled at the first man and called him Adam. There was a lot to do that day. God told Adam that he was in charge of all the animals. His first job was to name them. Adam probably laughed when he saw the monkeys hanging from the trees, chattering to each other. He may have grinned when he saw the elephants with their long trunks and big flapping ears. He probably stopped to pet the shy deer and play with a black bear. God said, It is not good for Adam to be by himself. I will make a mate for him. Adam had probably noticed that he was by himself. He may have noticed that all the animals had a partner. They had creatures like themselves to keep them company. They could communicate and share things, but there had been no one for him. So God made Adam fall into a deep sleep. Then he took one of Adam's ribs and created a woman. When Adam woke up, God brought the woman to him. Adam was pleased. He said, She was made from my bones and my flesh. She will be called woman because she was taken out of man. And Adam called the first woman Eve. At the end of the day, God looked at everything he had created. He saw the plants, the trees, the fish, the animals, and Adam and Eve. It had been a good day. And God said, this is very good. Good afternoon and happy Sabbath to those of you that are here. And to those of you watching online, those of you that are here, you look so beautiful today. I'm sorry, maybe next week those that are online could be here that I could give them a compliment too. All right, it is now time for us to return to the Lord his tithe and his offering. There is a notable saying that said, there's a notable song that says, how can I say thanks for all the things that you have done for me? Things I so undeserve to prove your love for me. The voices of a million angels could not express my gratitude. But Lord, I just want to tell you thanks for what you have done for me. Likewise, in the book of Malachi, the book of Malachi, chapter 3, 
it is noted that um, the text that I want to read, it says, um, begins from verse 6. For I am the Lord your God, and I change not. Therefore, ye sons of Jacob are consumed. From the days of your father, you have gone away from mine ordinance and have not kept them. Return unto me, and I will return unto you, says the Lord of hosts. But ye say, Wherein shall we return? In tithe and in offering. You are cursed with a curse, for you have not returned even this whole nation. Therefore, bring ye all the tithes into the storehouse, that there will be meat in my house. And prove me now here, which says the Lord of hosts, if I will not open you the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing so that there will not be room enough to receive it. Brothers and sisters, the deacons will come forth. The deacons and the deaconesses will come forward. Let us pray. Eternal Father and Lord, we ask you to bless our tithes and our free will offering. Lord, our free will offering is that we use to support our community and different activities of our church. To help those in need as we go downtown and we feed the poor and help those provide clothing for them. Lord, may we continue to further your cause as we continue to support your church, we pray in Jesus' worthy and holy name. that you stand with us as we continue to praise and worship.
testimony from this um, this past week. So over the last, I would say maybe two months or so, um, my son Matthew, most of you know him, you see him usually in a blur running somewhere. Um, he has really bad eczema, really, really bad eczema. And for the last two months, he specifically had this flare up on his hands that um, were really bad, like really, really bad. He had open sores, his skin was peeling, it was cracked. He had infections, he had to take antibiotics. I tried, you name it, I tried it. I tried the steroids, I tried the creams, I tried the maintenance medications, I tried different lotions, I tried warm water, I tried cold water, I tried everything. Um, but I'll be honest, I don't think I truly tried God. And I would say maybe four days ago, I, um, I, I prayed a different prayer. And I said, God, Lord, he is five years old. He wants to play in the dirt. He wants to have fun. He wants to touch things. He's tactile. He wants to learn. He wants to do everything, and he needs his hands to do them. And without me running behind him, like, no, 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 don't touch that. Don't touch that, please. Oh, you touched it. Let's go wash your hands. So I prayed, and I said, Lord, please. And I, I sent some pictures. I don't know if the pictures are there, but some pictures of some of the open sores and things on his hands. And two days ago, um, woke up, and I looked at his hand, and I didn't try anything different, um, but I woke up, and baby, come here. Show them your hands. His hands are clear. So, and there's before. You see the hands peeling. So, this is just a reminder that if you are sick, try God. If you need financial help, try God. 
whatever it is that you need, try God. And I mean, go in scripture, check the word. There are scriptures to support every single promise that he has. It's crazy, for two months, I struggled with his hands to the point where, I mean, I would cry over his hands because I'm like, Lord, please. But then one night I simply prayed simply over the hands. I looked up scriptures on healing and I knew, and I just, okay, so you are gonna take these hands. You are going to take these hands, God. And we woke up two days later and those hands were clear. So this is simply a reminder to try God. Whatever it is you have going on, try God. So let's worship. He is Alpha, he is Omega, and we just have to give him all the glory.
you all the glory, O oh Lord. You know, when, I'm, when I think about it, sing, we give you all the glory with no restriction, with no limitation. All the glory. Why? Because our God is worthy to be praised. Amen. And this morning, we are going to pray this God. And I'll invite those of you who want to join me all the way in the front to pray. Please come. If you have a prayer card, this prayer card, you will find them in the pews. You have a written prayer request. Please bring your prayer card. We'll continue to pray over them through the week. If you don't have a prayer card, you want to join us, please do so. And we are going to our God to pray. We are going to our God. with an attitude of worship and praise because he is worthy to receive our praise. Now as we go, I'll remind you this verse from Hebrew 4, 16 which is an invitation how we can come to the Lord. Let us therefore come boldly to the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. Let us come boldly with assurance to our God. Lord God, you say it in your word. And we come with boldness to the throne of grace. And we come, we bow down in adoration to praise you, to worship you, to give you all the glory. Lord, all the glory that can come from deep inside our soul with all of our strength. We say, God, you are good. You are worthy to be praised. Hallelujah. Because you are God. Because you are the creator. Because you are the system of life. Because you are the Alpha and the Omega. Because in you we find everything. We find perfection. Because in you we find assurance for the ultimate reward. Eternal time with you in heaven. Lord, we praise your name this morning. Lord, we adore you this morning. Lord, we thank you this morning. We love you not only for who you are, but for what you've done. We are here this morning because of your love and your care. This is why we can come and make this bold decision to get close to the throne of grace to say hallelujah thank you Jesus I'm alive I can move I can speak nothing will stop me to praise to glorify my God nothing regardless on what is going on in my life regardless on the challenges that I am going through, but I can come, as your words say, close to this throne where I will find mercy and grace for help in time of need. And the time of need is now, Jesus. And the real need is the need for Jesus. 
The real need is for us to be assured of your presence, of your eyes, to, of the, that look we are waiting for this morning, for that touch we are waiting for this morning to transform our life, Jesus. To turn us into the man, that man that you want us to be. Focus in you, on you. Keep our eyes on you, not on the circumstances, Lord. This morning, we want to praise your name, Jesus. This morning. Yes, Lord. We want to send to, to, send to heaven all the glory that we can. Because you are good. And we thank you also, Lord, as we come. That you accept us as we are. And we ask forgiveness for all the wrong we have done. But you don't look at the wrong we are doing. You look at a way to save us, Lord Jesus. You look as a way to take us away from the wrong. We move the wrong from our life and transform our life. For this, Lord, we give you all the glory. But Lord, this week, this week, you, you worked through our life. You made a miracle. And thank you again. Praise to your name for, for Matthew's hand that you heal miraculously. I'm sure that you've performed other miracles this week, Lord. Praise be to your name. But Lord God, you know, Lord, how many miracles that are pending. How many requests that have been coming to you for, for weeks or months or years. You know all of them this morning. I pray. I pray that we turn unto you. And praising you and start praising for the deliverance that are coming. And when I pray for deliverance, Lord, it can be that you change the circumstances or that you give us the patience to walk through the circumstances or you give us the strength to stay through the circumstances knowing that we are not alone. You are with us. We can trust you. You know, we, you have our back and we can continue to come boldly to the throne of grace to find help. Lord, this morning your children are here and I'm sure you have a special words for them. So I pray that you, you continue to use your servant pastor words, that you continue to bless him and to fill him with your Holy Spirit so when he comes here, it will not be Pastor was speaking. No, it will be you talking, speaking to your children through your servant. Thank you for the privilege to know you, for the privilege to honor you and to praise you. Thank you for the privilege to know that soon and very soon we will see our Lord, our Savior. And soon and very soon. Our worship will be not in person at plantation, but in person in heaven with our Lord Jesus. Oh, Lord Jesus, please come, deliver us. This is our prayer. This is our plea this morning. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Reason we've come together.
to worship a God who is worthy of all our worship. And every chance I get, I want to declare and affirm that all the other gods of the nations are idols, but that our God made the heavens and the earth. Let me extend a warm welcome to every worshiper, those who are guests, and those who are members as we've come to seek God while he may be found. I was thinking, Andrew, that I might have needed a boat to get here <laughs> based on what happened this week. Notice that someone put in a lake in the church <laughs> overnight. I know that some folks are still drying out. We thank God that we can assemble ourselves together for worship. Our prayer summit, I understand, is on tomorrow, Pastor Mike. Our prayer summit is on. You can be part of that as, they, as we seek God together. I understand that uh, Tashana, where are you, Tashana? I understand it's Tashana's birthday today. Uh, we want to wish her happy birthday. There she is. Amen. Uh, there's nothing like celebrating a birthday on the Sabbath. It's a beautiful thing. We pray God uh, blessing over her. Uh, perhaps at the end of the service, Pastor Mike, we can hook her up. I have a special anointing for her at the end of the service. I think that would be uh, so fitting. As you heard, we, we had to postpone our ministry fear. It will be on on the 20th of November, of May, rather, of May, as we seek to get you involved in the various ministries of the church. And as I mentioned, if there's a ministry that we don't have and you have an idea, we can work on that together. I'm hoping that as we worship, you will have a personal encounter with God. It came to my memory this morning that it has been, tomorrow will be a year, since I've been installed here, it's quite a year it has been, a year of transition. When I got here, there were two other pastors. They have since, well, not abandoned me, they have since transitioned to other things. I thank God for them. And as I thought about this, this milestone and how I started talking about how we need to get to the next level, expanding the kingdom. I thought I'd share a word with you, caption, the gospel of the itching ears, the gospel of the itching ears. I have committed myself to share the word of God, to be biblical as I possibly can, to point you to Jesus, through his word. Amen? It's, the, it's Jesus who says, and we are made better as we spend time reading and digesting the word of God. He sat. He sat in the cold, damp dungeon. It had, it, 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 it had a single window that emitted only a few light rays. There he was, a Christian soldier, he was battle-scarred, weary and worn, but his spirit was still undaunted. He was troubled on every side, yet not distressed. He was perplexed, but not in despair. Persecuted, but not forsaken. Cast down, but not destroyed. This Christian soldier knew that the time had come for him to be delivered up to the axe man. He knew that his work was done. And so he had declared, I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. I've kept the faith. Henceforth, there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me at that day, and not to me only, but unto all them also that love his appearing. Neighbor, though his faith was certain, his faith was sure. And so his shackled hand held the quill in as he wrote it on the parchment words 
of encouragement as he used for illumination the few light rays that were emanating from the single window. He wrote words of encouragement and advice to his young intern, his protege, his spiritual son, Timothy. The Holy Spirit himself inspired the apostle as he wrote. You see, neighbor, this second epistle to Timothy is regarded as Paul's final epistle. Its messages, however, are not only for Timothy, but they are for all those who are in the body of Jesus. So we turn our attention to 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 1 through the verse 6, for our focus text for today. The new King James Version's rendition of Scripture says, I charge you therefore before God and the Lord Jesus Christ, who will judge the living and the dead at his appearing and his kingdom. Preach the word. Be ready in season and out of season. Convince, rebuke, exhort with all long-suffering and teaching. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but according to their own desires, because they have itching ears, they'll heap up to themselves teachers. And they will turn their ears away from the truth and be turned aside to fables. Verse 5. But you be watchful in all things. Endure afflictions. Do the work of an evangelist. Fulfill your ministry. Verse 6 and last. For I am already being poured out as a drink offering. And the time of my departure is at hand. This is the word of God, neighbor, and I believe it. Let's pray together. Lord, we thank you for the movement of the Spirit in the service thus far. May you stop by every pew, by every heart and every mind. Arrest our attention, remove every distraction. Speak to me and through me in spite of me, we pray. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, this passage is often used as a charge at ordination services or at ministerial institution, in, in, installations, rather. But let me hasten to say that when this was written, the target audience of the Holy Spirit goes or went beyond just these occasions. The apostle in writing to his intern, his protege, his spiritual son, says, a time will come, Timothy, when they will not endure sound doctrine. And neighbor, I want you to understand that the they that Paul is referring to is not folks outside of the body of Christ, is not folks outside of the church, but the they he's referring to, he's referring to folks who are in the church, those who are in the body of Christ. The apostle foresees a time when people, he says, will take affront to sound doctrine, will be insulted by sound doctrine, will be turned off by sound doctrine. They will not, Paul says, endure sound doctrine. Now, the word endure often conjures up an imagery of hardship, endure, of struggle, of difficulty, of inconvenience. But it is the latter that Paul is using the word as, that is, it is inconvenience. Paul says they will not endure sound doctrine. That is, it will be inconvenient to them. They will not put up with it. They will not entertain or tolerate sound doctrine. Simply put, Timothy, the day is going to come when some folks in the church will not listen to sound doctrine. Now, what is sound doctrine? How do we know that a doctrine is sound? Well, I believe that the text in Galatians chapter 1, verse 6 to the 9, gives us a good 
a, a, a roadmap as Paul seeks to address some issues in the church at Galatia where some folks came in and they were stirring up the church and creating doctrinal problems in the church. And we find in Paul's response a roadmap to understand what sound doctrine is. And so in Galatians chapter 1, verse 6 to 9, Paul addresses the issue of the gospel being perverted. Paul says, talking to the church, I marvel that you're turning away so soon from whom? Stay with me, from whom? From whom? From him who called you into the grace of Christ to a different gospel. I want you to know, neighbor, that, that, that the gospel is about Jesus, amen, and the gospel is about turning to Jesus. Paul says, I marvel that you are turning away so soon from him, Jesus, who called you in the grace of Christ, and you're turning, he says, to a what? A different gospel. Verse 7, which is not another gospel, but there's some who trouble you and want to pervert the gospel of whom? Of Christ. But what? Verses 8 and 9. Paul says, but even if we or an angel from heaven preach any other gospel to you than what we have preached to you, let him be what? Let him be what? Let him be accursed. And verse 9, as we have said before, so now I say again, if anyone preaches any other gospel to you than what you have received, let him be accursed. Paul says, I am so certain of the gospel that I presented to you the first time, that if anybody comes after and tells you something else, do not believe them. As a matter of fact, he goes a step further, and he says, if we should return and tell you that we've changed our minds to what we told you in the first place, he says, don't believe even us. But then he introduces something that's very interesting. He says that even if an angel, stay with me carefully, stay with me neighbor, that even if an angel came from heaven and preached something different than what I have preached to you, Paul says what? Let him be accursed. You know, there are some folks, they are awed and swayed by credentials. Hello, there are some folks who accept truth based on who is saying it. They're swayed by personalities. They're swayed by uh, uh, degrees and pedigrees. There are some folks for whom truth is dependent on who is saying it. You see, neighbor, truth is not dependent on the speaker. Truth can stand by itself. You see, four plus four is not eight because I say so. Whether I say so or some other person say so, four plus four is eight. It is not dependent on who says it. And yet we have a culture right now where folks say, well, that's your truth and, and that's my truth. And people are accepting stuff based on who says it. They're being swayed by personality. And we find that attitude is even in the church. And we don't have folks today who are like the Bereans who will check the preacher out. You see, neighbor, you are not to check the Bible against your preacher. You ought to check your preacher against the Bible. Paul says that even if an angel came from heaven and told you something separate from what I told you uh, at the beginning. Do not believe. Do not be swayed by, by credentials and personalities by smart people. Years ago when I was in college in the 80s, they, they had a group of scholars who came together, 1985 it was, and they, they had a group called the Jesus Seminar. The Jesus Seminar. And this was a group that came together, I think it was about 50 scholars, and they, and they, they were examining the, the, the miracles and the teachings of Jesus. And, and, and they came to the conclusion that Jesus was a good moral man. 
awesome leader. And, and, and they said, well, 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 the, the, the miracles were, 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 were just the feverish imaginations of the disciples. And that Jesus was this revolutionary who, 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 who went against the status quo. That, 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 that his teachings would upend the status quo. And when, and when the, the smart folks from the Jesus Seminar, when they were done with the Gospels, there was hardly any Gospel left. They removed all the miracles of Jesus. They removed all the story of his resurrection. They removed all that stuff. And these were smart people. Interesting the group dissolved in 2016. And the gospel has survived the Jesus Seminar. Come on, say amen. You see, neighbor, sound doctrine must have at its center Jesus Christ. I think I'm in the wrong church. Let me say it again. Sound doctrine must have at its center Jesus Christ. Sound doctrine is based solely on thus said the Lord, not based on what the preacher says, not based on the preacher's opinion, but it's based on what the Word says. Don't tell me what your preacher says. Tell me what the Bible says. We've got folks twisting, twisting the church. I was talking, the Word of God, I was talking to a colleague recently from another church, and, and his his, his, his denomination, Pastor Mike, is going through an identity crisis, a split personality. And he's asking him, what are you going to do? Because you see, there, there was one part of the denomination that was going in a certain way. And, and his church was saying, hey, we, well, 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 we're not going in that way. There's one part of his denomination that was going to, to ordain gay folks. And his church was saying, we, we don't know, we can't do that. And they were going to have some, some, sem some conference, Andrew, to determine where to go. Listen, you don't need to have any conference to determine where to go. The Bible is clear. Sound doctrine is Christocentric. Listen, neighbor, sound doctrine is not just about what you know, it's about whom you know. It's about knowing Jesus. You see, there are folks who know a lot of stuff, but they don't know Jesus. There are folks who can explain the prophecies, but they don't know Jesus. There are folks who can explain all the doctrines, but they don't know Jesus. Listen, neighbor, you can go to hell with a lot of Bible knowledge. Because it's about knowing Jesus. Whatever the doctrine is, it must lead to Jesus. That's the reason I want to ensure that as a preacher of the word, I point you to Jesus. Our world is sick with religion, easy religion syndrome. There are folks who want their religion like Mickey D's. You know, I will take number one, but no number five. They want to choose and do a drive-through with religion. And the church has been infected by this. I remember while we were going through the pandemic, Joe, and they were preparing us, you know, as pastors, how to deal and navigate in that space and, and was sharing, you know, when you get online and, and how to make it catchy and, and how to hold attention because, you know, people have the clicker now and, and they can click and they can change. They, they listen to you for a few seconds. I don't like that. They switch to something else. They change the channel to something that they like. And there are folks who have taken that attitude in church. If what is presented they don't like, they just tune you out. They just simply change the channel. Paul says the day is going to come, Timothy, when church folks, he says, after their own desires, after their own lusts, they will heap to themselves. In other words, they will go to hear preachers and teachers who will satisfy what they like to hear. People who will be avid for the latest novelty and they'll collect to themselves teachers and, and preachers who will tell them things that they like to hear. 
They want to hear novelties and tantalizing te theories and stimulating rhetoric, flowery phrases rather than the Word of God, which is able to make them wise unto salvation. Ours is an age where people see truth as relative. It's your truth, it's my truth, is, you know, it's relative to your circumstances and your situations. It's according to your culture and your ethnic background. I've got my truth, you've got your truth. You see, I can't get up tomorrow morning, Andrew, and decide that 14 inches make a foot. I can't do that. I can't say, well, that's my truth. And Andrew can't decide, well, well, Pastor, my truth is 11 inches make a foot. That's my truth. If it's going to be true, there's got to be an absolute nature about it. Come on, say amen. It can't be because Andrew said it or I said it. It must stand on its own. The folks who believe there are no absolutes really, it depends on where you see it. It's where you stand. It's where you sit. It's your culture. It's your experience. And a lot of folks are into experience preaching. Oh, I just need to preach my experience. Listen, neighbor, if your experience is not grounded in the Word of God, you can keep it to yourself. Because my hope must be built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness, I must not trust the sweetest frame, but woe lean on Jesus' name. And so the question I ask us today is, what are your ears itching for? What are your ears itching for? Some mo motivational speaking to, to tell you how good you are, you, you are and how better you can become? Oh, Pastor, I just need, I need something to, to tell me, you know. And folks go to, go, go to service to worship, and all they get is some motivational speaking. And don't get, don't get it twisted. Paul says that there is room for that in preaching. But a preaching, a preacher ought to, ought to, ought to, con, ought to, ought to share words that, that convict you and, 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 and confront you. There must be times in the sermon and in the preaching where you go, ouch. You must leave knowing that, that, that God can make you a better person, but you've got to confront the reality of your sins and, 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 and your, weakness, your weaknesses and your issues. There are times for us to weep between the altars, Pastor Mike. Folks, sometimes just want to hear everything is hunky-dory. Some folks want to hear a prosperity gospel. You know, claim it. Eh? Hello? A gospel that says God wants everybody to have a nice car and a nice house and, and a fat bank account. Hello? A gospel that says God is some vending machine. You say one prayer, two prayer, and then the blessings come out. That there are no challenges, there are no difficulties. Folks don't want to make any sacrifice for the kingdom because preacher says, hey, God has paved the way for you. Just claim it, brother. We're not immune against this as a denomination. But there are those who are among us questioning the fundamentals of our faith, Joe. Is the sanctuary message still relevant, Pastor Mike? Is the man of sin, the antichrist, a person? Is it a person or is it a system? What about health reform and dress reform and Sabbath reform and Christian education? Are these still relevant today? What is sound doctrine? Do you want to hear it? Or are your ears itching for something which is nice and easy? There's some folks, they like, their, they, 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 they like their, their sermons and they like their preaching the way they like their popcorn and soda. Popcorn and soda sermons, they fill you up, but they have little or no nutritional value. But how do you and I respond to truth when it cuts across our fundest concepts, desires, and ideas? Folks who hear the word and they're always thinking, well, that's not for me. That's for my neighbor. Reminded of a story of a man who, after a pastor preached to a packed church, met him at the door, shook his hand, said, Pastor, 
You gave it to them today. The following weekend, it rained, and so half the church showed up. And at the end, he met the pastor at the door. He said, Pastor, man, you gave it to them today. It's a pity the other half wasn't here to get it. The following weekend, it rained really, really hard, and only the pastor and the fellow showed up for church. The pastor decided that he would preach to this one-man audience anyway. And after he had preached, the brother met him in the aisle and said, Pastor, wow, it's a pity they weren't, they weren't here to get it. Because for too many folks, it's always about how it applies to my neighbor and not how the word applies to me. And so I ask you today, what are your ears itching for? Do you want a gospel that will challenge, a gospel that will motivate, a gospel that will rebuke, a gospel that will correct? But only if you are open to hear the gospel, it will challenge and rebuke, it will encourage, it will motivate. It comes all together. It's not just one thing. The gospel of the itching ears is the gospel of convenience. Folk want to do church. Folks want to serve Jesus, but they want to do so on the cheap. No sacrifices, nothing to give up. All I got to do is do a few minutes here, do a few hours here, and, and, and I'm good with God until next weekend. No sacrifice needs to be made. I don't need to be confronted with my sins and my weaknesses. As a matter of fact, I don't need no preacher telling me I'm a sinner and that I need Jesus. I need to be saved from something. No. I need a preacher to tell me that God is love and, and God is going to save everybody regardless of what they do. That's the gospel of the itching ear. That's not the gospel of Jesus Christ. The gospel of Jesus Christ is the gospel that says that you and I, if we must come after him, that we must take up our cross and follow him daily. The gospel of Jesus Christ saves me from my sins and give me power to live and overcome his life. The gospel of Jesus Christ says I've got to make sacrifices down here so I can make it up there. The gospel of Jesus Christ says I come to Jesus just as I am, but I don't remain the same because he transforms my life. The gospel of Jesus Christ says I am no longer the same. I'm a new person because Jesus has come into my life. Today, I want to accept the gospel of Jesus Christ according to the Word of God, not according to the preacher, not according to some eloquent speaker, not according to somebody with degrees and pedigrees, but I want to accept it according to thus say the Lord, because my hope must be built on nothing less but Jesus' blood and His righteousness. If you share those sentiments with me, will you stand to your feet as we close? But Lord, I want nothing but your word. I convince that it will challenge me sometimes. I confess, Lord, rather that it will challenge me sometimes. I confess that sometimes your word, the truth, will, will cut across my fondest desires and my fondest uh, dreams and aspirations that the truth of God will sometimes confront me but friends, being a Christian for some 40 plus years now, I've come to learn that the place where I grow the most, the places where I grow the most are the places where God has challenged me with his word. The places when I go to him and God shows me exactly who I am, but he, then he shows me that there is faith and there is hope in Jesus. I don't need to run from my reality in him. I just need to embrace my reality in him, knowing that because of Jesus, he can change whatever my reality is. Do you believe that today? Let's pray. Father God, we thank you so much for your word. We recommit ourselves to your word. So not only the reading of your word and, and the knowing of your word, but knowing you, Jesus. You who said that you are the truth, you are the way, and that you are the life. We pray for that man, that woman, that boy, 
the girl who've not yet known the joy of a surrendered life. Right now, may you continue to do your work through the agency of your Holy Spirit. Bring about conviction and conversion. Help them to know right now that the best friend to have is Jesus. The best time to have him is now. We praise you and we give you thanks because it is in his name we pray. Amen and amen. Let's continue standing as we sing our closing song, Lord, I give you my heart. This place, Lord. We commit our entire life to you. We leave this place, but never from your presence. Rest, remain, and abide with us. Remind us that these are holy hours, so we can continue to gain the full benefits of the Sabbath. So may God bless you, and may he keep you. May the grace and favor of God shine upon you and through you this week. May God be with you as you enter your house and leave your house, as you wake up in the morning and as you go to bed. This is our prayer. In Jesus' name, amen. a birthday in the house happy birthday Richard <laughs> and happy birthday Nikki where's Nikki happy birthday
like to come up here and worship with us, feel free to come on up. Bye. 
Thank you for watching our live stream today. I hope that you were blessed and enjoyed the service. Until we live stream again, visit us at plantationsda.tv for more uplifting content. Or if you have a prayer request on your heart, stop by plantationsda.org and let us know how we can pray for you. And if you're ever in the Plantation, Florida area, I'd like to personally invite you to stop by and worship with us. We hope to see you soon.